The hot corner feature allows you to get quick access to your charms bar and the quick access menu. Now in Windows 8, Microsoft removed the start menu and start button from the desktop. And so there was no other choice but to use hot corners and the charms bar. With Windows 8.1, they've improved access for keyboard and mouse users while maintaining some flexibility for touch users. In other words, they've added back in some things to make traditional desktop computing a little bit easier. But for many users switching to Windows 8.1 from XP or Windows 7, it's still a bit daunting. So let's take a look at how you can know how to find your way around the new Windows interface. So this is the Windows Start screen. And most of the time, especially for users coming from XP or 7, you'll be in the desktop view. Now you can actually set Windows 8.1 to start up in the desktop view, but you're still going to be using the Start screen a fair bit to find and launch applications. To that end, Microsoft has reintroduced a Start button here on the main screen. Now it does not bring up a Start menu as it would have in Windows 7. Instead, it flips back and forth between the desktop and the Start screen. It has one very important use though, if you right click on it, it brings up the quick access menu. So this is not a click, but a right click and you get this quick launch of a number of quick things that you might want to be able to get into. This can also be invoked by holding down the windows key, not just tapping it, which swaps you into the start screen, but holding it down and pressing X. This win X combination brings up the quick access menu. Now win X actually works in windows eight as well, although slightly different menu and even in windows seven on completely different menu. So keep that in mind that that's a quick way to get some of the things you might need. Now there's some other motions that take a little bit of getting used to. If you take the mouse and you hover it in the upper left corner, you get the last application you were using right here. If you click on it, it will toggle back and you'll see now we've toggled into the store, which was the last application I was in, but because I didn't move my mouse very far, I still have the last application here. In this case, my last application is now the desktop. So I can go back and forth. Now I also have the pictures library because it was one I was using recently. And so by going up into the upper left corner and clicking, I can toggle between recently used applications. Can be a little bit of a tricky maneuver to get used to, but you can in fact uh, be quite successful with it. Now, if you go up here and you come down just a bit to this sort of um, translucent uh, part of a rectangle here, you can actually, depending on which type of applications you were running, if you're running Windows Store apps, you can actually get into this split screen mode like that. Or you can drop down this menu that has all of the recently running applications for you to choose from. Now, if you're touch enabled, if you have a touch screen, it's easier to swipe in from the left, which will toggle between these or swipe in and split the screen. So swiping is definitely a much easier maneuver than using the mouse if you have that available. If we're back on our desktop, the other thing that we're going to need to learn how to use is the charms bar. For a touch enabled user, you slide in from the right or swipe in from the right and that opens the charm bar. If you're using strictly the mouse, you can go to the upper right corner and you'll get the charms bar. And now it comes up without the black background until you move into the bar itself uh, and then it's there available for selecting. And if you're a keyboard type, holding down the win key and tapping C opens the charm bar. That's probably the easiest maneuver to remember, win C for charms. On the charms bar, we can search, we can share things from the application that we're using, we can get directly to the start screen, we can have the devices option, which I'll explain in a moment, or go into settings. So let's come back and talk about devices. Now devices does not take you to the device manager. Devices instead uh, supplies you with options that you can do with connected devices that you have at the moment. For example, if you're in a, um, something like a PDF reader program, devices might let you print the file. If you're in a music program, devices might allow you to send a particular music file to a portable music player. Settings does just what it sounds like. It takes you into a subset of the settings menu. You can go into there from the, from there, you can go into the control panel, personalization, PC info, get help. You can see what your network settings are like, what your volumes are set for. You can change your screen rotation options, your keyboard options, your power settings, or log off, log on, set, shut down the computer, 
and tap on change PC settings to get into the full PC settings menu. Now it does take a little getting used to, to understand what's on the PC settings menu and what's in control panel, but you have access to both of them with just a couple of taps or clicks. So the key things to remember here is that the hot corners on the top, on the left, let you swap between applications on the right, let you open up the charms and the windows button down here at the bottom, including the right click to bring up the quick access menu. By using these keyboard shortcuts and hot corners, you'll be able to navigate very quickly through the Windows 8.1 interface.